church, but uh, and a part of the church. In Acts chapter two, Acts chapter one, two, Acts chapter two, and verse four. That's going to be where our major thrust comes from. Acts chapter two and verse four. We're going to also uh, uh, look at verse eight, verse eight of chapter one. Uh, now there are millions who are presently in church somewhere across this continent, across this world. Millions. Some are called Catholics, some are called Protestants. They are receiving the Holy Eucharist, or they are hearing a priest give a homily, that they call it, because it's very short. Are they hearing a Baptist pastor preach and sweat and jump up and down and run down aisles, etc., and cause a lot of things to take place in the church? And we uh, see all of this across America and across the uh, continents of the country, of the world, uh, that uh, there, is, there is always something going on that attracts our attention, that is not necessarily the church. Uh, sometimes people come to the church for entertainment, and that's unfortunate, but it's true. Now, you notice that in Acts uh, chapter 1 and verse 8, notice that verse there, Jesus uh, had the apostles to say something, and he said something. He said, but you will receive, look at this, you will receive, notice in verse 8 of chapter 1 of Acts, <coughs> excuse me, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now notice it didn't say in you. It says you will receive power. I have not met anybody yet who doesn't like power. Amen. If you wake up one morning and you don't have the power to get out of bed, it may frighten you. If you're driving down the highway, you don't have power to steer the car anymore and you can't move it, you would get frightened. If you're flying an aircraft and the pilot says, put on your seatbelts, you might get frightened. But then it says, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Notice that it doesn't say anything about it being in you yet. He said, you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up on you. Amen. When you have been born of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God does come upon you. That power comes upon you. There is something unique about you after that. Whether you're Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, or whatever, there's a power, there's a spirit that comes upon you once you've been born again. Yes. Now, some of us never recognize it. Now, notice uh, that verse again in Acts 1 But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, if the Holy Spirit has not come upon you, you have not yet received any power, so don't try to use it. Amen. Whole lot of people make people so uh, tired and weary in churches because they're trying to mimic something they don't have. Amen. I hope you get that. He said, you will receive power in the Greek, okay, it's dynamis. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Now, when you receive power, you're going to be his witnesses. Now, how do you be his witnesses? Certainly, it is not like these people who go around and call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, they, they use Jehovah because uh, that's some form in the Old Testament of God. Now, witness. What is a witness? What does a witness do? A witness testifies to the truth of something. Amen. And sometimes even to lies. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now notice here, it doesn't say yet that the Holy Spirit is in them. It says the Holy Spirit has just come upon them. And once you get born again of the Spirit of God, in your spirit, now it doesn't have to be sold yet, then you have power that has come upon you. And some of us, I don't think in the church, and I'm not talking just just the local church, don't even know what it is. Now notice, again, but you will receive power. You have power as a child of God to overcome any obstacle, any problem, any situation that is negative in your lives. You have the authority and the power to overcome it. All you need to do is to be constant and committed to holding fast to your confession. Amen. That's what you do. Many doctors of medicine would have quit school if they had to have fast confession that they're going to medical school to become a doctor. And they wanted to be a doctor so much until they stayed there in medical for four years, went to college, and then went in internship for a long time. Excuse me. And that's, by the way, by the way, that's why some churches, some people in the church, rather, uh, they mimic power. 
they, they tune themselves into doing something. They, t they, they, they wind themselves up to do something. And nothing comes of it. Notice it says, and you will receive power, look at verse 8, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Notice it, let me say again. Notice it doesn't say anything about the Holy Spirit being in you at this point. And he said, now, when the power comes upon you, you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and Philadelphia and Germantown and all other areas around here and where you live. Amen. There is something different about a person who's been born of the Spirit of God and a person who's been baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes people may say to you, you know, you're different. And sometimes they may ask you, what's different about you? You can tell them it's because I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm born of Him. In other words, not only did He create me, He also had me as His, birth, as his spiritual child. Amen. That makes a difference. Now, there are some good people in the world who are on the way to hell. They're not going to heaven. But in the sense of a natural human sense, they're good people, good neighbors, good neighbors. They look out for your house when you're gone. Uh, amen. They tell you somebody's wandering around your home. They will help you out if you get into a, you know, tight at your house. Amen. But they're not going to heaven. They're going to hell when they leave here. And the church, and many of our churches, they don't talk about hell anymore. And Satan and all of his helpers in hell are happy. <coughs> Just let me remain incognito and do my dirty work. Are you still there? Amen. He says, you will receive power, dynamis, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, witnesses to his power, witnesses to who he is, witnesses to what he does. Amen. That's what you will be. I'm not talking about, let me say again, I'm not talking about these people who call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they got something on their agenda that is totally... Uh, for lack of a better word, I'll just say out of sight. Amen. Notice. Now, notice now, he says, when the, now, he went on later on to tell us that later on in the same book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost, now Pentecost, again, okay, that's for 50 days. 50 days after the ascension of Jesus, something happened. And it shocked them. He told them to go in Jerusalem and stay there until a certain time. Now some people are not, in some churches they tarry to receive the Holy Spirit. But you don't really have to do that. Amen. But you can do it. He says, now when the, when the day of Pentecost, look at chapter 2 now, 1, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. They were waiting for something. Jesus had promised them something, they were waiting for it. They were in one place. In other words, some of them were not home in the bed sleeping because they had a hangover from lack of hope. <laughs> They were not because they stayed up and party and had to have a drink, you know, they could have been just party up until 2 o'clock in the morning and just couldn't make it. Are you with me? Yes. Now notice, uh, I've, I've seen that happen, you understand? I've, I've never been a victim of it, but I've seen it happen. All right? When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. It filled the whole house. Have you ever sensed a presence about you and you didn't know what it was? <coughs> a presence, a divine presence. And it just overshadowed you. Have you ever had that happen to you? Yes. That's God, the Holy Spirit, who is coming to visit you. Amen. And notice, he said, he said, now they appeared to them when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues. That could be translated languages. In other words, they didn't speak their native language. We speak English. Some people speak Greek. Some Latin. Some Spanish. Uh, some Russian. In other words, they began to speak all these languages and never learned them. Because they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled. And that takes all the fear out of life. Can you hear me? Okay. That takes all the fear out of life. You know, like when you fear darkness, some children cry all night because they're in the dark room. Some adults sleep with light, lights on all night because they are fearful of going to sleep. But when you get this in you, and you get this a part of your life, when the Holy Spirit is you filled with Him, then all of these fears disappear. Amen. Amen. You're no longer fearful. You're no longer, let me put it in, in another way, you're no longer scared. You just breathe. And you are at peace. And you are together. 
and you're not always trying to find somebody to prop you up. You ever, you ever have friends that they always want something and never give anything? And they, they call hang-ons. You know, hang-ons. Now notice, he says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, uh, and they were all together right, in one place, Acts 2, 1. And secondly, instantly, there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. Have you ever been in a rushing wind? That's what it was like. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Notice they were not in a church house, they were in a regular common house because they wanted persecution. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire disturbing them, and they, resist, and they rested on each one of them. And then something strange happened. They all were filled with the Holy Spirit, the hagios pneumatos in the Greek. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And saints of God, everybody here, boys and girls, men and women, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, there is definitely something different about you. Amen. Amen. It's like you can have a, you can have a drink of, of cutter sock and water or bourbon and water and just one drink it won't do anything to you, but have five bourbons and see what happened to you. And it was like they had had five drinks of bourbon and had a chaser after. They were drunk. And people said, it's, new. it's not time to be drunk. Something else happened to them. They had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And they went out everywhere telling everybody about Jesus. I'm not talking about these folks again who call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, they witnesses all right. But I don't know if it's Jehovah. Mm -hmm. it and today we need also to be filled. You don't have to be a show off. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit after being born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit gets born again. The soul gets saved. And then uh, you can be walking in the light of the Holy Spirit. You can do things you never thought you could do. And not by your own might, but by his power that's in you. Yeah. Now in most of your, many of your churches, they don't talk about this. In some of your, now the Methodists, they began to talk about it. They had a, you know, a brief happening in their church. Baptists, they tend to stay away from this. That is your regular Baptists. Now you got your, some who, I guess they're Pentecostal Baptists. Uh, but then you got Pentecostals, many of them go too far. But this is available to every person who has been born in the Spirit of God. Amen. And there is nothing like power. Amen. When I was a boy, we had old cars, and I had a 1957 Ford. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just get out sometimes and race each other and see who's one to get off the line quickest. <laughs> and I, I won sometimes, the other one sometimes. Sometimes you, sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. Well, then with this though, with this Holy Spirit, when you feel with Him, you're always ready and you never lose. Amen. It's not like playing the lottery. You, you know, you don't know whether you're going to win or not. I mean, you can play $5, $10, $20, $30, $100, and you still don't know whether you're going to win. But I mean, if you play that number, you might get something. I don't know. But don't think it's a pastor told me. Are you with me? Now, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, had come, they were all together in one place, and secondly, there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. Now, notice. And it, notice it says here, it filled the house, whole house, where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues of fire, distributed themselves, and they rested each one of them. And then when that happened, they all were filled. Note that word filled in your Bible. And it's filled in King James also. Uh, I think some of y'all think King James came down from heaven from Jesus. But it didn't come down in English, it came down in Greek. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the Spirit was giving them the utterance. Now there was Jews there, proselytes, all kinds of people, and they all got filled. God didn't show any favoritism because they all got born again. And saints of God, let me tell you, in this economy that we're living in now in America, and it's not going north, it seems to be going south then some people are suffering right now. They can hardly pay their bills. Some people are getting laid off right now. They can hardly make it. 
and they don't know what to do. Well, this Jesus I'm talking about right now can help them out. This Holy Spirit, this power can always, power always works. You know what I'm saying? Power always works. And you ever notice that people always basically look up to power? If you're strong and resilient, people look up to you. But if you're weakling and you fail, you know, uh, just anything, you know, stuck, you know, stump your toe and you can't come to church. Or you get a little cold, you know, you can't go to work. And then I'm going to take off too many days, they fire you. You ever notice that? It happens in the, in the working day world uh, quite frequently. Amen? Now notice, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place. There came a violent rushing wind. And then notice, and they all spoke a language, notice in verse 8, and how is it that each hear them in our own language to which we were born? In other words, there were some people speaking Greek, some speaking uh, Italian, I guess, some speaking uh, uh, Russian, and some, all kind of languages being spoken. And see, God made that possible so that we could see that the authentication of his word is validated. <laughs> you know, somebody asked me again last week, Pastor, how you doing? As if I'm supposed to be a little bit, can't sleep at night, you know? And as if I gotta go in the room and lock the door because, you know, my wife might come visit me. <laughs> It'll be all right if she did, it wouldn't bother me. Amen. 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 But it's all right that she's in heaven too. Amen. So I let you know that. See, I don't try to control God, I let God control me. Amen. And that makes all the difference in the world. You see, they will feel with, underline that in your Bible, Acts 1 8. You see, it says, but you will receive power, and actually a power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now notice he's not even in the person yet. Just upon you. You ever had you ever felt something upon you, your whole body? Huh? You know you can feel a chill and it's not on the inside there, but when it gets on the inside where you're in terrible trouble. Now notice. But you will receive power. How many of y'all like power? I, I, I like power. I like having power, you know. You know, and, and some people like that, they just love to stand up front, you know, and struck, you know. You know, but he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Can't even be in you, just on you. Are you with me? And you shall be witnesses. Now, when the power comes upon you, you're going to be a witness. You're going to be a light in the world. Some people say, isn't there something different about you? What happened to you? That, they, they, they don't know what it is, but something is different about you. You go to work one day, you know, I just come on, and you say, they said, what happened to you? Uh, what, what happened? I mean, boy, your skin looks different. You got, you seem like you got a different, different, different atmosphere about you. You, you know what Well, the spirit came upon me. It's like you go to work after a hangover, after you had five scotches. <laughs> Late at night. Uh, vodka Collins, you know, Vodka Collins. They think you take Vodka Collins and if you want to get drunk, just drink enough of your seat. You see? Now notice. No, no, I, I still that. I used to be a bottom, you know that, right? <laughs> and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the world, this way, everywhere in the world, Africa, Asia, North America, South America, Russia, everywhere, no matter what language people speak, they can be filled with the Holy Spirit and operate in this power. Amen. Amen. And incidentally, I say it again, and that's why I'm calm at night. That's why I still can sleep in the bed where my wife and I sleep, and it doesn't bother me. I go to sleep. I don't toss and turn all night. Now you say, did you love your wife? Sure, I love my wife. But I also love God. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Sure, I'm human like everybody else. But see, humanity can be, can be uh, submerged into the spirit of God, and it takes on a different power. Yes. That's my children. <laughs> they know their dad real well. Are you with me? You see, you can't just talk this. You have to walk this and do this. Amen. Amen. See, it's a trick. You are the light of the world. Now, light is no good if it's not turned on. Amen. Amen. You can have a thousand light bulbs and don't turn them on and they will not help you at all. But if you turn them on, they can help you see your way. Amen. That's the same thing with the spirit being in people. You know, if you, if you keep the spirit quiet, don't let him operate in you, then he will not guide you. You cut him up and say, don't, don't say, don't be saying, don't, don't be talking to me now. Don't say anything to me now. Amen. I remember, that. well, never mind, I won't go there. They were filled, now notice Acts 2, 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. 
And they were, notice that, and they were all, there was about 140 people there. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, hagios pneumatos again in the Greek, and began to speak with other tongues. That means languages that they did not know, not that native language. And as the Spirit was giving them the utterance, now who was giving them what to say? The Holy Spirit in their spirit was telling them what to say, and they were talking. Now, boy, now let that happen to too many churches and people be walking out some of them. I don't want nothing to do with that. That's strange folk. Well, some people stay in the church all their lives, right? And, go to, and then they go to heaven because they've been born again and never get this experience. You know why? Because they reject it. They refuse it. And then sometimes Pentecostals put on, Pentecostals, they put on acts. I can tell this is good myself. Now, don't, 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 don't come ask me about it. When a person is feeling when they're not, the Lord gives me a word about it. Yes. Amen. Now, he doesn't give me a word about everything. Don't misunderstand. Amen? Amen. But after you have been a doctor so long, there's just certain things you just know when a person, per patient walk in office. Amen. When you've been a pastor so long, 40 some years have been doing this, you just recognize certain things about folk. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you, 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 but you don't tell people everything. You got to be Amen. careful about how much you tell. Amen. You can tell too much. Yes. And you don't help a person, you destroy them. Yes. Amen? Amen. It's not for people to know everything. Yes. That's why God only gives you some things. Some things. Oh, God. Yes. Amen. Notice it says, and they were, Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other terms or other languages other than what they knew. They were speaking those languages as the Spirit was giving them the utterance. The Spirit was telling them what to say. And say, friend, when the Spirit starts telling you what to say, you're going to always get over Always. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter whose company you're in. It doesn't matter where you are. You're going to always be in the front and not the back. Yes. Amen. Yes. Always. And you say, well, Pastor, why can't I get it? Well, you got to first believe it. Amen. You know, no one, no one ever graduated from college who didn't believe they could do it. Amen. Nobody ever received a Ph.D. degree, a doctor philosophy degree, unless they believe they could do it. Everybody who decided, oh, well, I, I can't do it, boy, it's just too much. They just require too much. They keep on going over my dissertation and want me to correct this and correct that. And, and, and you know, you get, get tired. But then, if you just hang in there, that's graduation day. <laughs> if you just hang in there, everybody's glad, glad about graduation. I mean, parents come from afar, friends come, they graduate. That makes all the difference in the world. Yes, and listen, friends, when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and He began, His Spirit begins to dwell in you, you graduate. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And no matter what happens, you're going to make it. Yes. You're going to be the top and not the bottom. Amen. 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 You're going to be a victor and not a, how should I say, uh, a victor and not a failure. That's what you're going to be. And that's what keeps me Gordon Stanley Houston. Uh, that's, what's keep, that's what keeps me positive. Amen. That's what keeps me loving folk when they lie on you and treat you like you're dirt. That helps you along the way. Are like you still there? Amen. And then no matter what happens in your lives, you will always be able to make it over. You look back and wonder how you got over, don't wonder anymore. It was because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And always put you over. Amen. That's why, no matter where I am, I always bow my head. If I'm eating out to dinner, I always bow my head and say my thanksgiving Amen. privately. Amen. Because you've got to be careful about what you do in public. You, say you become a show off, you see. But if you just do it quietly. It's amazing how many people sit out every day and they think that, you know, I, I made this food, I grew it, I bought it, and my money pays for it, I work hard for it, so I don't need to offer these things. Yes, you do too. Because you wouldn't be here if it weren't for God. All we are, all we ever expect to be, God is the cause. He's the positive factor. And that's a mighty wonderful thing. Yes. To have God as your Father, to have God as your Savior, to have God as your Creator, and to have God as your Resurrector. Yes. That's a mighty wonderful thing. Yes. And I'm glad about it. Yes. And that's enough for the day. Yes. Amen. 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 You got to be perceptive and perceive people. Amen. You see, you give people too much, they get tired. Mm -hmm. You give them enough, you give them just enough, they'll be all right. They'll come back again. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. If there's a person present, 
who have not been born again, I invite you to be born again, come and be born again. If there's a person present who is sick and you want to be healed, come and God will heal you. Amen.